This is the Spurs Cast with your host, Paul Garcia. All right, welcome back to another episode of the Spurs Cast. On today's episode, I will be joined by Project Spurs Director of Digital Content, Joe Garcia. In this episode, Joe and I will discuss the Spurs' projected rotation to begin the regular season on Wednesday against the Charlotte Hornets. Joe, how you doing? I'm doing good, man. Great to be back on Spurs Cast talking San Antonio Spurs basketball on and what we're just a couple of days removed from the regular season. So exciting times. Yep, it's on the way. Those five preseason games are over now for the Spurs. And let's let's begin, Joe. So let's let's first talk about the rotation uh in this episode. First let's start with the starters. Uh so so the projected starting to be Trey Jones, Devin Vassell at the two, Keldon Johnson at the three, Jeremy Sohan at the four, and Jakob Pertl at the five. And if we remember it back in the preseason before, actually back in training camp, at the time when this all began, uh, Coach Pop only said Pertl would be a starter for sure. And then we didn't actually know who would fill out the rest of the starting lineup. And so now that, that they've gone through five games, the team, we do see that, that starting group. So let's first talk about Trey Jones. Uh, I call him more so like that quiet quarterback. He just does a little bit of everything on the court. When you look up at the box score at the end of the night, you know, he's had a, a few assists, a few rebounds, a few steals, a few, uh, you know, you know, 10, to, like seven to like 11 points. So even though he doesn't get, you know, a lot of credit or he doesn't have like the flashy kind of t- kind of game like some of the other players on the team, he does do a lot for this team. What do you thought about Trey Jones uh, being the starting point guard for this team? I think it's been a great addition for for the young group, you know, especially the, with all the young guys up front. You got some of that better veteran, veteran leadership. Uh, he's more of a true point guard facilitator of the basketball rather than just trying to go ahead and, you know, look for his shot first and, and get his points up there. And he's wanting to get the team involved, which is great to see. Uh, he just keeps his head down, quiet, goes out there, does his job, does a great job, doesn't make a lot of mistakes and only makes the team better when he's out there on the court. So you love everything you're seeing out of Trey Jones, especially early on in preseason. It's just going to translate into him, you know, even being that much more of an integral part uh, for the team moving forward forward to the regular season. Yeah, and one thing he allows um, both Devin Vassell and Kelly Johnson to do is really, he allows them to thrive where they can kind of be that one-two punch on offense and really start to learn how to create for themselves and others because he's not he's not an aggressive type of, of, of shot taker where he's like driving all the time and trying to get to the rim relentlessly. And so because of that, it allows Devin and Kelly to both operate either in, in full court or in the half court. And so that's something that's going to help their um, games flourish as, as they become two of the focal points in the offense. Uh, so now let's talk about Devin Vassell. You know, he's he's definitely had a, had a good preseason where he's really shown that he's taken his game to to a different level here, especially being able to create um, some shots for himself. Here was Coach Pop um, before the game against the Thunder on Thursday on Devin Vassell. Here's what he said. He's become very confident. He's become proficient at shooting the three. He's attacking the basket with aggressiveness, looking for opportunities. He knows we need him to score, and he enjoys that. I don't know what player wouldn't. He's done a real good job of stepping up his game. One thing I really noted about Devin was how he uses that little, um, like almost like a hop step to, to kind of get some separation from his defender when he's going inside, attacking the paint, and then kind of getting like a mid range jumper off and he has that shot pretty well so again he's showing that that he can he's definitely taking his game up uh, to another level early on he also mentioned that defensively he hasn't been uh you know playing uh doing what he normally does and he is going to focus on that when the regular season does start that a little he's kind of focused a little bit too much on his offense but he says he'll be ready to go for the regular season with his defense what have you thought about Devin? Oh, Devin's been great to see, you know, and, you know, how he's elevated his game uh, looks a little bit more polished out there. You know, like I was, was telling you, he's his own biggest critic. You know, he's always been really harsh on himself. And that's great because it's pushed him to, to do better every, you know, every season, off season, including this one. His shot has more fluidity to it. It looks a lot more polished. He looks like he's a lot more confident taking his shots. Doesn't look like he's rushed, not hesitant as much. Uh, he's making all the great decisions you'd like to see out of somebody who, who's played, you know, at least a couple of seasons in the NBA. So you liked everything you saw out of him, you know, in preseason. I expect him fully to be the Spurs second, le- second scorer only behind one Keldon Johnson. Okay. And then one thing I forgot to note was that Devin himself said that they had put on some weight this offseason because he wants to ha- be able to absorb contact and get to the free throw line. He's hoping to, to increase his free throw attempts uh, this coming season. Keldon Johnson, we only, we only got to see him in two games because he was on the injury list to start the preseason, but then um, he did end up being the three, and that was somewhere that Coach Pop noted that he wanted he wanted him to play more so this offseason, I mean, this coming season. And so we saw that Keldon has, uh, he dropped 20 pounds, he said, at the beginning of training camp. And so he has shown that he can 
hit the three. He can, he can hit those spot-up threes if you need him to. But also, uh, he's continued to, to attack the basket, especially with the Spurs wanting to be one of the quicker teams in the league of kind of grabbing a defensive rebound and going and, and getting, you know, if, if the basket's open, attack it. He showed that against the Thunder defense in one of those preseason games where he, he had, I think, 16 points in the paint. What have you thought about Kelton Johnson's um, um, early um, impressions in, in preseason? One of the things that I've liked about Keldon Johnson that I don't think people have really taken notice of is his ability to be really scrappy in the paint, Mm -hmm. Um, more so that he's going in there and actually fighting for the rebounds, much like we saw him against the Oklahoma City Thunder. There was a play there where he went after his own miss, was amongst the trees, still came down with the ball, tried to put the ball back up, missed, came back down with his rebound again, looked for the open man, found uh, one of his cutting, uh, uh, you know, uh, a cutting spur, you know, a spur cutting to the basket and he dished them the ball and they made an easy layup. But you like the decisions that he's making, the aggressiveness that he's attacking the 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 the, the ball with, you know, as far as going out there and getting these rebounds. Um, I like everything that I'm seeing out of him. Uh, the only thing that I, I'll question, though, is uh, how control is he going to be this coming season? He still has tendencies where he gets out of control, but he's played a lot more controlled going back into last season. Uh, I think he's shown a lot of growth already. I look forward to what he's going to do in the regular season, but it looks like he's going to be getting a lot of those double teams because I've seen that yep. already happening in the pre- preseason play. So it's going to be a test to him to see how well he's going to be able to handle the double, the triple teams, and the different looks that teams are going to be throwing at him this season because – He's going to garner a lot of attention. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, one thing I, I you know, just for you saying that, that's something I'm very interested in seeing Kelton and Devin is, you know, how do they operate in the half court? We saw a little bit more of Devin um, and because he got to play more preseason games. But I think also one thing we got to note is that, you know, they played some of the bad defenses that, that are expected to be bad. You know, OKC, uh, um, is that Utah, like they look really good against those defenses. You know, they're not going to play those teams every night. They're going to play really good teams most of the season. So I am interested, like you said, Joe, in seeing – they, how do they attack against a really good defense who, who's going to have better um, schemes where they're going to double team or maybe zone or, or throw different looks at the Spurs? So, yeah, that'll be – and, again, that's that's expected that they're probably going to struggle because these are young players who are now getting more responsibility on offense. Let's talk about Jeremy Sohan. You know, Pop said that most likely a rookie would get some minutes to, to start to start the season, un, unlike most seasons, but Sohan – rookie he ends up he's most likely going to start there at the four uh here's why pop likes him you can just tell Sohan had the best chance just because of his defense i know he doesn't he doesn't um have a lot to add uh to the floor but it's just his defense if you play really good defense and you're switchable coach pop's gonna like you as a player and he's gonna you know you're gonna have a a really good chance with him so here's what he said about Sohan pop he says he's got a kelton johnson kind of attitude he's always up and smiling loves to play very competitive and aggressive plays on he doesn't get down that's the first thing you notice about him but then his versatility shines he's about six eight i guess he can get the the rebound and take it on the break himself he's a good ball handler he can pass he's a skilled player he needs to work on his shot but he's going to have a great career and then just also talking about Sohan, here's some that Jakob Pertl said about Sohan and Kelton. says, that's a good thing to have. Um, Kelton was guarding fours for the most part last year anyway. Sohan's very versatile. Like I said, he can switch onto a five and hold his own. So again, uh, Sohan, um, you know, is getting compliments from, from Pop and and and, and, and Pertl, and mainly because of his defense and the, and the fact that on offense he can, um, you know, hold, uh, move the ball and keep the, keep the ball moving. What have you thought about Sohan's um, early rookie campaign? Well, early rookie campaign, what I'm seeing from him in the preseason is he moves really well, you know, out there on the court. I mean, he's just all over the place, and you like Mm -hmm. to see that he can go ahead and uh, dribble the ball up and down the court as well. Like they said, he has great handles. Uh, The only thing that I have seen, as Coach Bob has has, uh, pointed out, and a lot of Spurs fans have pointed out, very critical of of the rookie, you know, in these uh, couple games that they've seen him in in the preseason – is his shot. I get it. You know, it's not where Spurs fans are expecting, hey, he's been in the top, he was a top 10 pick. They want him to come out and, you know, I don't know, I guess they're expecting him to score 20 points a game. That's not really going to happen because if you looked at his scouting report and even seen some of his games over at Baylor, he's not an offensive powerhouse. He's more out there for, for his defensive prowess, being able to keep up with his defenders and the way he just moves out there, especially in the half court and in the open court situations, being able to help on that fast break, being able to facilitate the ball, uh, you know, dribble it up and down the court, even in the half set. Um, those are little things that you like about him. He can score, though. He's working on that, you know. <laughs> I think what he has the ability to do, actually, is kind of form himself into this 
Bowen, Bruce Bowen type of player where he's out there, yes, for his defense, but when you're when he's given the chance and when he's open, he can knock down a three. I think it, that would be something that he might be looking to add to his arsenal. Uh, I did see him knock down a three in this last outing against Oklahoma City Thunder, and his shot's not that bad. I mean, he has a great form. He just might have to work on some of those mechanics, but other than that, I mean, I liked everything I've seen out of him, but again, he's out there for his defense, not so much to put up double digit points every single game if you can get forces to six points out of the kid that's a plus yeah. on everything else he's able to do exactly you know I'm, i wasn't expecting you know you're right if, if you read the scout report this is kind of what he does he's a really good defender versatile that's why he and he's you know he can play like, like, they, like we said he can through five even Pertle there says he can hold his own against big guys against fives and then offensively like like pop said you know he moved he does dribble handoffs. He's able to kind of move the move the actions, and that's what you want out, you want out of him. And yes, I think the two areas that you're looking for is scoring to at least to, to at least improve a little bit. This this at least in the year one is his like his shooting from three in terms of spot ups. Like if he gets like a corner three, yes, he's gonna have to work on that all season. And also kind of being a player who got, who kind of stands like in that dunker spot, and he's ready to have like a cut to the basket and somebody feeds him the ball. And he had to play like that also against the. Th- you said, Joe, if you're getting, you know, four to six points out of him, that's a, that's a, that's a good thing. He's not going to be a 20 point night scorer here in year one. And, you know, maybe down the line, he may never be that because that's not what he was projected to be as a player. And so, um, yeah, I, I feel like, um, you know, you definitely so you see out of him, the starters like that. Josh Primo mentioned how they're, they're really um, big, long, this starting group where they can switch a lot. Um, they have a lot of size and that's definitely going to help them. So again, uh, those are your, um, oh, actually we forgot Jakob Pertl. All right, so now let's talk about Jakob Pertl. He is the center. We Again, we knew that he was going to start this preseason. One thing he's really done is he's taken um, a, a bigger responsibility I've seen on, on offense in terms of being like that quarterback for the team when he's over, um, you know, at the elbow uh, free throw line or at the three-point line where he's kind of, you know, using those dribble handoff actions. He's watching his players do those backdoor cuts and he's feeding them, uh, his teammates. And so, um, you know, Pop also says on, on defense, they need him to be that anchor, you know, there in the center of the paint. And so he doesn't do as much switching as the other players, one through four, but he's definitely there as like, the, you know, a lot of about how they feel safe of gambling a few times on defense because they know that Pirtle's going to be there to kind of have their back there at the rim. What did you think? What have you thought about Pirtle's preseason? Uh, the portals preseason has been, you know, typical Yaka portal. You know, he's he's not all flashy out there, but he can get some things done, you know, as far as his, uh, you know, defense out there and his ability to do his little, you know, pop of shots and play mm-hmm. inside the paint. You know, that hasn't changed. And it, it goes to show you just how how valuable he is uh, to the San Antonio Spurs uh, in that starting lineup. I mean, he is just a solid center. Like I said, doesn't do a lot of the things that you're going to say, oh, man. You know, he's going to put him on the highlight reel. He just goes out there and does his job. And that's what you like about Jakob. But more importantly, his leadership uh, ability out there, you know, as far as him being able to go ahead and be that veteran, should I say, and impart his knowledge onto this, you know, to the younger uh, players and onto the rookies. That's going to be uh, really healthy for them as far as growth this particular season. So, you, again, you like to go ahead and see him along with Devin and Jakob. I mean, Jakob, him and Keldon in the starting lineup because, again, it balances it out uh, with the rookies that are going to be inserted into the starting lineup as well. Yeah, and something I want to note about about him is that if I, I know that you know everyone's going to think that the Spurs are going to trade him this season because he's one of the veteran players along with Doug McDermott and Josh Richardson, but if by February the trade deadline comes and goes and they don't trade Pirtle, I am interested if maybe they give him an extension because I, I was reading an article by Bobby Marks of ESPN this morning and he says that uh, the Spurs have until June thirtieth this this coming year to um uh, to to extend Pirtle and and uh, trade Jones. So again, if the Spurs want him, you know, for their future, not just this one season. And so, again, I think that's something to watch that if they don't end up trading him and we know he's going to be a free agent next next summer, I think that maybe that's that if they really like what he does as, as one of their foundation, one of, the, one of their anchor pieces, um, they might end up extending him. So, again, that's something to watch as, as this season progresses is, um, you know, keep an eye on, on Pirtle in the event that they don't trade. Maybe he ends up staying here uh, long term with his team. All right, so now this would actually be a good move on the Spurs part because if they do extend him, we know that if they if they wait until the, the offseason to do that, the the – the cap is going to be a little bit more uh, beefy. So players are going to garner a little bit more out there in the yeah. open market. So if the Spurs were to go ahead and go ahead and extend him before they get into the, the off season, that would actually help save them a little bit of money. And then at that point, if they want to go ahead and trade Jakob, they could do so without it impacting the, the cap uh, in a, in a, in a negative manner, you know? 
Yeah, so, so those are something to watch again uh, it, on Pirtle again. If that February trade deadline comes in and he's still on the team, that's something to watch is maybe they have plans for him uh, for the future. All right, Joe, now let's talk about the second unit. You know, this is kind of what it, what it shaped out to be. It's going to be Josh Primo is one of the lead ball handlers off the bench. Josh. I know he got he got hurt there in the preseason, but Coach Pop says he is expected to be back for opening night. Uh, Doug McDermott has been um, playing more of the three here um, it, it, off the bench, a quick um, spark off the bench with the shooting and also being able to cut to the basket. Now, the, the key here, the, the, the question um, I, I kind of have is here is who's going to play at the four in the backup because um, we've seen a lot of Kata Bates' job in Isaiah Roby. When we look at um, in terms of minutes, it's actually been Kata Bates' job getting most of the minutes. And also in terms of who goes in first, it's usually been Kata Bates' job. And then uh, Zach Collins is the backup center for this team behind Pirtle. Uh, he's currently in the concussion protocol, but Pop thinks that he will be back for opening night. If he's not back from opening night, then we have seen that Gorgie Jane can pick um, that role of being the, the backup center. Let's first begin with Primo. He only got to play in two games this preseason. Uh, the first one against the Jazz um, was a little bit quiet for him. You know, he was barely getting his, his legs under him his first game back. But then that second game against the Thunder, whoo, he erupted 23 points off the bench. He was just, <laughs> I felt so bad for Josh Giddy. Primo knew he could get by him easily. And he just did that, um, you know, um, attack after attack after attack, getting into the paint with some of his, his really um, flashy layups. So let's talk, let's, let's get some quotes. Cool- some of the players on Primo. Uh, Keldon Johnson on Josh Primo's night, he says, he came in and gave us a spark tonight. I feel like that's the player he can be every night. I feel like Primo can get to the rim. He's 6'7", playing the point guard. He can get to the rim. He can score the ball. He can pass the ball. He can do it all. I, I, have, I feel he, uh, having a unique player like Joshua can uh, really turn it on, who can really turn it on and get things going. It's big for us. So that was Keldon. Devin also said something to the effect of like, you know, here's Primo, this big guard who kind of has like a different kind of pace to him, who, who gives like the team like a different kind of attack when he comes off the bench. Uh, and then here was Primo about coming off the bench. He says that for him, it's more of an advantage because he's able to read what's going out on the floor first before um, coming into the game. He says... There's definitely an advantage. I've already seen how the flow of the game has gone. Just being able to have that opportunity to watch, observe, and go out there and plan your attack. And so we saw that. You know, he came in immediately, and he knew that he could get into the paint at will. And so he finishes with 14 of his 23 points there in the paint and also gets the free throw line multiple times. What did you think about Josh Primo entering um, this preseason? Uh, Josh Primo, I was excited to see, you know, what all that work that he was doing in, in the weight room in the offseason, how that was going to uh, play mm-hmm. off, you know, and he bulked up. You could clearly see that in his physique and I was excited to see him uh, start, you know, getting some reps in and, and getting some minutes out there out on the court. Uh, we did see him, like you said, sparingly in this previous game before, you know, OKC and he played, you know, but he didn't really have a coming out party like he did against the Thunder. Against the Thunder, 23 points, you know, coming off the bench and he played a little over 24 minutes and he was perfect from the free throw line, six of six. That's huge. Huge, because that means that the kid can be, uh, he can get fouled and he can be counted on to go to the stripe and and knock down his free throws, which is something that the Spurs have never been very prolific with. You know, they that's kind of been in their, their Achilles heel. Uh, but the other thing that I liked about Josh Primo is he, great offensive performance that he had against OKC, but his ability to absorb the contact and still yes. follow through was huge. And I also liked another aspect of his game with that added bulk, that strength that he has now. One of the things that I found impressive about Josh Primo is his ability to get spacing out there on the court in order to go ahead and create his shot. I saw him kind of push off with his his uh, his elbow, and not his elbow, but his arm and his shoulder a little bit, create some space and immediately go into what I'd like to call a little jump fadeaway little shot that he has going for him. Uh, and it's a high arcing shot and it's, it's not really easy to block. So he's not only being able to create that space, but get into his shot and then shoot it, you know, with that little high arcing floater or the jump shot, should I say that he has, it was impressive. I mean, the kid's ceiling right now, it looks pretty high. We don't really know what he can actually do at this point, but just seeing what he was able to do against OKC gives Spurs fans a lot of hope and excitement for the upcoming season. If he can be consistent and put up, you know, double digits as far as points go and then play defense and not make a lot of mistakes and get his teammates involved, especially coming off the bench with that second unit being the backup point guard, it's going to be really fun to see this team out there in the, in the upcoming season. Yeah, and I think that's why, at least to start the season, it's good for him to be the backup point guard because he gets that he gets more more leeway, more 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 freedom to do what he wants when he gets out of the court, be more aggressive. Whereas if he's in the starting group, he you know he's got to got to kind of defer to Kelton first, and then Devin Vassell, and then maybe he's like the third player who can kind of attack. And so this is a perfect opportunity for him and Doug. I, I didn't know how instant spark off the bench so far in the preseason. Whether 
shooting the three or making those cuts. Uh, Josh Richardson, Richardson, when he was healthy, showed some, some um, off ball creativity as well. Uh, and then here's my big question: Who do you think ends up being the backup four? Because like I said. Kata Bates Joff has gotten in the, in all the games first before Isaiah Roby. He's also gotten more minutes in the preseason. Um, what are your thoughts there? Do you think like they use Roby more so as a situational big, like as a back of five or maybe um, or like, you know, small ball five, should I say, or maybe just, uh, you know, pop kind of feels it out and sees where he needs Roby. Who do you think ends up being that backup four? I think that backup four has to be KBD, Kata Bates uh, Diop, because from what I've seen out of him, I mean, Coach Pop, uh, really admires the the work that he's put into his game. He knows the Spurs system. He's a savvy veteran. He does everything that that Coach Pop asks of him, and he does it quite well. Um, it's not a lot of flash, but he just he's out there being consistent. And I think that's going to go ahead and garner him that that position over, let's say Isaiah Roby. I think Isaiah Roby is going to be a situational player. I think okay. he can still go ahead and you know, I guess back up. KBD in case he gets injured, but Coach Pop can also uh, use Isaiah Roby in other versatile uh, means as well, dependent on where injury might come in place. So let's say if Zach Collins winds up getting injured, we have Gorgie Dang injured. Hey, Isaiah Roby might be able to fill in as a backup center. So I think he's going to be a, a a little Swiss Army knife there for Coach Popovich. Okay, I, I agree with that as well. He's more like like you said, like a situational. Who they're gonna who they're gonna rely on, and now let's go to the final part of the rotation. This is kind of like the, the back end of the bench, the the players who are gonna play. Like if it was like a blowout or if like somebody gets hurt, uh, and then there's also players who are gonna most likely end up in Austin. So let's first begin with um, uh, the in, in case of, of blowout or, or injury players. Uh, this is the two, two of the rookies, Blake Wesley and Malachi Branham. Um, you know we, did, we we saw we saw Wesley play a lot of minutes early on before um, you know Primo joined the team and Kelton Johnson. So again, once the full um, core players are back, those players aren't. It's gonna be hard for those players to get out on the floor. They have a lot of veteran players. Rotation. Uh, Joe Wieskamp and Romeo Langford also didn't play as much. Uh, we're going to talk about them in, in a separate Spurs because one of those two players might end up getting waived here. Um, and so they're also, though, you know, as we look at the rotation, they're kind of toward the back end of the roster. And then Gorgie Jang, again, he's like kind of that third center backup in case Jakob gets hurt or in case, like right now, Zach Collins is on the injured list. Gorgie Jang's ready to go in and, and play and play minutes for, uh, for the team. And then the players most likely headed to Austin. We know one for sure whenever the G League starts, they haven't started yet. Dominic Barlow, the rookie, who signed a two-year deal, a two-way deal, should I say. Uh, here was Coach Pop on Barlow. Um, you know, even though Barlow looked pretty good in some of the minutes that he played in the preseason, he says he's at the beginning. He'll spend some time in the G League and play lots of minutes. If he was now, he's not going to get on the court that much, which doesn't help him develop. We've had so many guys over the years develop in the G League and end up being valuable players. That will that will be be his path probably in the very beginning. And then um, and then Jordan Hall, who's also in a two-way contract, most likely ends up in the G League to start whenever they start their season up. Um, I could also see Wesley and, and Branham getting sent to the G League just because, again, they have so many other guards and wings in front of them. What are your thoughts on the end of the ro roster there, Joe? Oh man, I, I got to tell you, I was uh, looking at Wees Camp, you know, just sitting there on the on the bench on the pine pony, like I like to like make fun and call it. Um, I don't know; it gives me kind of cause of con concern with Joe Wees Camp because he hasn't really played a whole lot, mm -hmm. and you're looking at Romeo Langford getting some minutes ahead of him. Uh, I'm, I mean, I'm just, I'm just saying by my eye test, Joe Wees Camp might not be. <laughs> safe from from the cut you know i mean the spurs did go ahead and extend him offer him a two two-year contract a little over 4.4 million dollars i believe paul um it, they didn't i mean yes it, it by by our means it's a lot of money but by nba standards it's not a whole lot so if you have to cut somebody i i think that i'm going to go ahead and say that it might be joe east camp that might make okay. that might get cut not to langford you know so I don't know, man. I'm, I'm, I really thought about that. And I was just watching the game like everybody else uh, against OKC. And I was thinking, hmm, one of these things doesn't doesn't look right. You know, this guy hasn't gotten a lot of run. Somebody's got to get cut. And I think Coach Pop has seen all he needs to see. So if you hear that the axe is coming down on, on one Joe, Joe Wieskamp or like the Spurs fans used to like to call him Threes Camp, don't be surprised. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I, I'm kind of, that's where I'm at too. It's either going to be Langford, we, who I think it's going to be. And you and I are going to get into this on a separate episode in more detail. But yeah, I think, you know, I wouldn't be surprised by either player at this point, whoever it ends up being. But I think it's for sure going to be one of those two players. All right. So thanks to Joe, Joe for joining me here on this episode and also for mixing and producing the Spurs cast. From all of us at Project Spurs, stay safe and have a great day. <laughs>